What's good, my people? Welcome to another episode of the Urban Wall Street Project. I'm your host, Earl Christian III, of course. And today I have a dynamic show for all my entrepreneurs, my young entrepreneurs, my teens that feel they've got what it takes to rise to the top. We got a teen in the house tonight. He's doing some amazing things. Not doing one or two, but three business ventures. And to accompany him and to show you the support that this young man has as his principal from his high school. They're representing the high school for legal studies in Brooklyn, New York. Without further ado, I want to introduce you to Mr. Johan J.D. Duran and Ms. Denise Morgan, principal of High School for Legal Studies in Brooklyn. Hi. Brother and sister, how y'all doing today? Great, um, thank you. All right, all right. So my man, J.D., welcome to the Urban Wall Street Project. You know we're all about urban businesses. And when I met you two weeks ago, you dropped a little line about what you were doing. You showed me your product, your ties. I said, brother... I want you on the show because we talk about entrepreneurialism and I foster that and to see you doing your thing is a beautiful thing. So let's talk about it. Let the people know who JD is and what he got going on. No, it's nothing. I'm just a regular kid thinking outside the box. It was one time how I actually started. It was back with uh, Christian Times, um, Black Church Meeting Business. We went to a conference. It was just to do a regular trip, you know. I'm like, hey, I'm gonna get out of school. I don't, I don't feel like going to school for one day is okay, you know. And then uh, our friend Subway, so I'm like, oh, <laughs> they got some real stuff. So we went, and they had different people talking. They were talking about entrepreneurship, about making your own business, da, da, da. and really in the back of my head, I'm like, why do I want to start my own business? Like, I ain't gonna make it nowhere. Like, I'm just trying to get a nine to five and do me. Like, right. you know, go to college and keep keep it pushing that way. But Eventually, they started asking questions that caught my attention, like, oh, who here wants to make more than their parents? Well, you think you could pay the bills? I was like, hold up, chick chain. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, that caught my attention. You know, I could be doing stuff that regular kids just don't do, not because they can't do it, just because they choose not to think outside the box. No question. You know, instead of hanging out and being on MySpace and all this stuff, I, I use that to put myself out there. I put my business up, I put pictures, I put people, I collect the people. I mean, like, my downline is looking like crazy. crazy. Like, I, I mean, to the point where I could just call up, okay, I call my assistant and be like, all right, so let's get a meeting, get 200 kids around. Okay, I want to do this, an invention, an event. Like, I did an event where I actually had to cut my hair, had to co cut the cornrows, take the earrings out, because uh, it was um, help tomorrow kids start business, not gangs. Okay. So it was a whole movement through that. We, could, we reached out to about 5,000 kids through Harlem, Brooklyn, and Manhattan. So from this report, like, just picking out kids out the street, you know, at the corner, instead of you hanging out with your homeboy, you could be making money. You know, you always talk, like, rappers nowadays, you know, upcoming rappers that want to be, like, underground so-called, so they're usually talking about, you know, I want to make this, I got bread, blah, 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 but, you know, be about it. Like, you, you could really sit down at the table and say, look, I have this. My wallets, you know, are just... Packing right. that, you know, because it was what I do, you know. So since I started, I started off first with um, my line of health and wellness products, which I have a line of 300 products from my own energy drink, sponsored by NBA players and so on. Uh, then I started off where um, I kept I kept on with international business kids. So from there, I mentor kids ages 8 through 18. So here I am, a uh, regular 13-year-old. Then as time went by, I started teaching kids that were basically 17 and 18, kids that was looking at me like, I didn't have no fish uh, coming out, it's coming out. <laughs> but kids that was basically almost off to college, and here I am, the little one just teaching him about their finance, financial aid, about banking accounts, starting stuff, like how to actually start your own business. How, what, do, what are you good at? How mm -hmm. can you put it into your own mind, your own flavor to it? How can you make money out of it, you That's know? Because right. at, the, at the end of the day, you want to have something in your pocket. No you know question. What I'm so... After that, then I, I kept I kept on going, worked with different stuff like um, Burn Lounge and stuff. So Burn Lounge, I know. Yeah, you Burn Lounge okay. uh, okay. uh, with George Frazier. I worked with him um, and and event and future upcomings with that. Uh, so within probably about a good 40 days of starting my business, my download was looking at probably like 200 kids. Okay. Which is something unusual. So then after that, I got the actual opportunity to work at the Wall Street Project um, for Rainbow Push uh, for the 10th anniversary. Mm -hmm. So there I worked with um, Jesse Jackson, I shopped them, Magic Johnson. I actually got to work and speak with the actual president-elect Barack Obama. Right. You know, so things out the box. So 
basically, I did that event. I spoke to around 3,000 kids, inspired basically all of them. It's not like I didn't want to be the only one because at my event, I was the one out of 400 kids, the only one that came back with a suit. I was like, okay, I'm ready. Mm -hmm. You know, so I had kids coming after me like, okay, okay. And then after that, um, later on that night at the reception, I met with this guy and I'm talking now. Listen, my mentor is somewhere else. She eating. She right, on right. her steak and her lobster and stuff. Right. You know, I mean, the place that you got to get in 500 just to get through the door. Like, no question. You know. So I'm, I'm talking to the guy one-on-one. -on -one. I'm like, okay, let me try it out. Um, and basically what happened was the next day I had another, another event. I, I had another workshop with the kids. Now, this is like 3,000 kids. And that guy, he was like, you know, I like what you're doing. I see what you're doing. I actually want my company to place an order for each kid. Mm. So now over that, my product, I mean, I went from selling for $50 person to a person, I mean to selling over $17,000, you know, which is like outrageous. Right. Like, you know, what kid do you know right. that is None. selling over 5000 10000 just None. of None. one sell in less than half an hour? Like... So that, that really just gave me publicity. I was doing press conferences and stuff, and people were looking at me like, you know, who is this kid? Like, mm -hmm. he's just coming out the blue. So eventually I came out with my, my monetize, um, mm -hmm. uh, which is distinguished ties, which each tie stands for something as far as in having a course, you know, each course. I wanted to mix it up with my longevity, the health and wellness power. So basically, as far as in me helping out the community too because Absolutely. you know you come out the community they give you something you want to give back you know yes, you want to come back and say okay you know i came from up here now i'm up here so all the other that was down here i want to bring you at least up here yes you know what i'm saying so exactly i wanted to reach out um to other kids and stuff so also the community helping them out so each course probably for if you buy a red a red tie let's say for example that could go for hiv or domestic violence you buy a pink tie it could go for breast cancer if you buy a gold tie for success you know each tie makes you you know you know you ever heard the saying uh the tie makes the suit makes the man yes, it sir. stands out that's right so i looked at that which is being very successful at the time now, eventually, I'm just waiting to get my trunk show for um, Macy's. Right, now, now, let's talk about this trunk show. Explain to the people what your trunk show is for Macy's. It's going to be in Herald Square, New York, right? Yeah. So understand, my people, JD's doing it real big. So let us know about the trunk show. And then, Ms. Morgan, you're going to talk about this phenomenal student that you have, have the pleasure of having in your school. Now, um, basically, a trunk show is where they give you the opportunity to basically expose yourself, see what you can bring in towards your own product. Can you sell it? Can you put it out there? Is it worth us putting an order on it? So basically what they're doing is they're giving an the opportunity for them to place an order, basically around 10,000 times. And basically within me bringing in my customers, I mean from like my downline, my mailing list, my network, I mean from all of that, I reach out from that. And basically by selling out, which, you know, God will provide, you know. Yes. So I, I, know, I know I'm a sellout and basically by selling out, you get basically a place in Macy's. I mean, I'm going to be walking into Macy's. I'm going to see Sean John, Donald Trump, Nautica, Distinguished Times. Right. Like, you know, <laughs> it, 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 it's just, it's right there. Yeah, like, feeling, right? just That's having them out, about. you know. Beautiful. So now, Miss Morgan, this is a dynamic young man. Now, I'm in your school. You know, we're working on a special project for your school, so I'm happy to be a part of that. And then you introduced me to this young man, and I was, you know, his, his energy and his passion seemed to parallel mine. So, you know, I was just enthused and, and we started talking for a moment. He had mm -hmm. his ties there and, and his, he's talking about how he met the president, the president elect, and, and he started this and he's only 15 years old. And I let you know, right at a spot, I said, I want to have this gentleman on the show. Tell me your experience with this gentleman and how does it feel to have him, you know, in your school with so much passion and desire and drive to become an entrepreneur? Because he's definitely on his way. Yeah. I think that this is why we as principals do what we do. And I would love to say that I had a lot to do with this, but he came this way. And I discovered him. I mean, he was already there doing what he did. And he's something very special about JD. Um, the confidence level, the high energy level. He has a plan. He's a man with a plan. And he's also very humble. Mm -hmm. Very, very humble. And um, the first time I really got to know him, he was part of one of his classes. Mm -hmm. in our $500,000 mock courtroom that right, we have right. at our school. And J.D. was the master of ceremonies for an event that, that was going on. And I was just amazed by his candor, his poise, his, his ability to, to walk the crowd in such a sincere manner. 
And I was like, this, he's, he's a great, he, he'd be a great talk show host, because I'm always seeing right. that. So he has so many wonderful talents, and um, I'm not surprised, because uh, that's who our adolescents are today. They're not, they're, they're thinkers, they're sharp in their, in their mind, they're sharp, fast on their feet. He has a plan, and I'm just proud that he um, is a part of our school. Definitely. He could have chosen any other school. I'm just honored that he um, selected our school to attend, and everybody loves him. Yeah, definitely. Um, his his classmates support him. Um, we're just really proud. And and I'm I want to say I, I commend you at both because I'm I'm very happy to have both of you here. For me, it's very important to showcase you know urban talent, urban excellence. Um, of course, urban and excellence in education. But when I can couple, when I can have a principal of a school um, and then one of her students here, and this shows that support and love because you know in most schools, principals and the students really don't converse too often. Um, they surely don't see that, that type of um, bond right here, so I'm really appreciating that. How does it feel for you, J.D., to have your principal here with you? I mean, it's an honor. Like, what, what principal do you know that really just sits aside from her daily job? I mean, like, back, day, back in the days when I used to be in middle school, all I know about my principal or so-called dean is when I'm in trouble, when they call in my house, I mean, <laughs> on some food fight type of stuff. Right, right. And basically, it, it stands out, you know, it speaks for itself what kind of principal I have, you know, that is not any regular type of principal that you can actually take a ride on the train with or basically go places with and basically sit there and actually have a conversation with. Again. And then at the same time for her to stand out like that as a principal, you know, so that really stands out and like I, I appreciate that from my principal. So I'm glad that I attend legal studies. Definitely. Now let's Let me talk just share this. One of the mm -hmm. things that I know yes. as, as a principal is that you don't have to be 25, 55, 65, 75 to be successful. And so what JD has brought to me is the reality of what I already know and believe that young people can be successful today. Yes. They don't have to wait. At 13, he began his, his journey to what's going to continue to be greater and greater. And so I'm not shocked. Um, he just, you, you're an example of what I believe. And it's an honor. And that's what I do. I love this. It's the best part of my day to spend time with my students and to hear them talk about their goals and to actually see one living his goals now. Because there's a great world out there, a lot of opportunities. There's no re to, reason to delay. Exactly. Get started. Now, now another thing that's so important, and, and it's, it's obvious that you have it, but I want to talk about it, because, you know, unfortunately, a lot of young individuals and older individuals don't have it. Let's talk about your support system, because once you decide, you know, I want to become an entrepreneur and I really want to get my feet into this, it's a lot of work. Let's talk about your support system at home. I mean, that's, that's like 100% push. I mean, I mean, that's like bench pressing, basically. Oh. Like, I'm, I'm the weight, and my father, my brother, my mother, uh, my little brother, my little sister, everybody basically stands out every time I have an event. Like, um, just recently, actually, um, we spoke about it. Uh, my, I, got, I had a war ceremony at the Brooklyn Marriott. I mean, where you had George Frazier, you had Al Sharpton, you had all these people where basically just stand out. I had a whole article stand out on me. Basically, all the stuff that stood out, um, they gave me the award, the Golden Award of the United States, actually for working with President-elect Barack Obama, working with Jesse Jackson, Al Sharpton. Then they gave me the New York State Award for um, Outstanding Achievements as Entrepreneur, Entrepreneur of the Year. And also the Entrepreneur of the Year with different, well, with Citibank, American Bank, mm -hmm. um, all those other banks, Golden Crust, actually working with people that have their own franchise and other stuff that are working on their own. They came from where I stand, just that I'm a youth of it. Right. You know? So right. that stands out a lot. You know, I'm doing what they're doing, but 50 years younger. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Man, so, now, so now, so how does it feel now? You know, a lot of this, I love the energy because in order to become successful, you definitely have to maintain that energy. You make, you remind me of a, you know a younger brother, younger me. You know what I'm saying? That's a beautiful thing. But let's talk about you know some of the uh, you know some of the I won't say negatives, but some of the pitfalls because it's a business. So as much as you have some great things, yeah. even at an early stage, you learn some lessons. What's some of the uh, obstacles or challenges that you've encountered thus far in your, in your endeavors? You know, it was times that I, I won't say that everything was happy, jolly, chickly chain. You know, it was times that, you know, I had basically some meetings where basically people were delayed. They didn't show up. I didn't have enough people to support me. You know, I wasn't able to get the word out there that much. Also, there was times that, you know, it was... You know, because you know it's good times, it's also rough times, no you know. So I had a couple of rough times, but basically my motto was to go by never giving up. You know, never give up. So my, I just kept, you know, 
what I had inside, what I believed in. Like, mm -hmm. if I'm successful at this, if I made it this far, why give up now? That's right. You know, you, you ha you, when you accomplish things, you can't let success get to you. You know, as soon as you hit big time, you can't just let it be, okay, I'm a full back. You know, you can have to go harder than actually when you actually started. Yes, sir. That would make, that's what brings you up another level. Mm-hmm. Exactly. So let's talk about your, your friends, your homies, people around the way. You got any haters or everybody got mad love and support? Um, there's definitely haters. <laughs> <laughs> that will always be out there. Yeah. You know, um, and, but mainly, you know, all my friends are actually supporting me now that I'm actually coming out with my own clothing line for 09 um, Afro Boys, which is very urban, yeah. 80s, 90s let's style. Let's talk about the Afro Boys. I like the concept. Let's talk about the Afro Boys. It's, it's basically an 80s, 90s style where the 2008-2009 retro flow. I mean, basically what you see on H&M and other stores that you think or you want in a shirt, the stuff that you wish, like, oh, hold on, I want this in a shirt, but I never see it. Right. You know, I can actually put that out there. So, you know, also from... My own perspective of what seems to be fashion nowadays and what I seem to come up with fashion. Like, don't get me wrong, you see this with the hat and stuff, but best believe that, like, you know, there's a tie under, you All know right. what I'm saying? Let them know, let so them know. So it's, it's a tie under, like, it's, it's how you put yourself out there, you know, that, that's what makes you, you know. People can't really say, like, oh, let's judge the book by its cover because you can't really tell me because I have a hoodie on that I'm not a nobody now when I have entries on magazines, front covers, uh, papers, articles on me. But at the same time, I can't put myself out there like, yo, yo, you know what I'm saying? Right, right. It's, it's how you put yourself out there, how, how you show others how you are, you know, how, how you can manage with, with in society, basically. No question. Now, it's, I'm sitting here, you know, and we've spoken, you know, so, you know, twice, and I'm sitting here now and I'm just still so amazed, you know, about the energy and the passion because you're going to be there. Know that. It's not mm -hmm. even a matter of, well, I hope. You have what it is. You know, you have the energy, you have the passion, you have the fire, you have the knowledge, and you're still humble and understand what's necessary to get there. Where, do, where does the humility and the drive come from? That? I don't know. That, that's, that's natural. Since I was little, I was always that type of hyper kid that mm -hmm. stood out, yet type troublemaker, always got in trouble, always some time out. <laughs> but... That taught me something, you know, that, that told me to stand out and look at things differently, you know. And the thing is that I want to do, basically with my drive and energy, is I want to uh, just get other kids to bring out that type of person. Because mm -hmm. everybody has the energy and motivated side inside of them. They just have to know how to bring them out and put it out there. Right. Now, let me ask, I'm glad you said that because, it's, you know, I do, what I go into the schools and I do the Young Producers Program or I talk to students in different parts of the country or the city, and it's very important to be able to inspire them. And I'm glad that I'm able to inspire them even though I'm an older generation. Mm -hmm. Why, how, what is it that you feel you possess that enables you to inspire the gener your generation? Because... I know what's out there. I know, I know, I know what they go through. I know what they see. I know what happens. I mean, when I tell you that I'm from my neighborhood, was my hood, where I'm from, like that I've seen basically many things from people on the street and all these other things, like corrupt this side. But at the same time, that doesn't give you a reason not to be successful. You know, you could come from the baddest place. I mean, like it's been tr tough times in my life. But at the same time, I, I achieve what I want to, mm -hmm. because it's me. Now, look at, um, for a, a great example is Barack Obama. This, this guy just came out of nowhere, <laughs> the only nerd <laughs> of his class, and basically he wanted something different. And now, look at him, the 40, soon to be the 44th president of the United States. Yeah. I have a question. On yes. This. I've always, uh, I'm like Earl, I'm so impressed, and just I can just hear you talk about your plans, because when I hear you talk about it, I see it. So I know if I can see it, that you've seen it for a while. So my question, but you, you, you still do what you need to do in school. You come to your classes. Oh, that's the so thing. So what I want to ask you is how do you keep that balance? You know that you have these, these plans that are really big and, and attainable. So how do you keep that balance cause to come to class and do what you need to do in your classes? You could call me a scale fool, or I know. <laughs> I mean, from me, I start class at 7 o'clock. I mean, I be there on time every time. I'm hoping to take over my future regions, my Spanish regions, which is not really heard of, like a second um, language for a uh, SOMA to be taken actually in January. So would you get me very, very ahead of my class? Um, also, as keeping focus and keeping my head, like I said, I don't let success get to me at all. I don't, I don't keep it to my head. I don't, I don't let anything of that 
of such matter because of the simple fact that I still know that I'm a teen, I'm a same person, I still can hang out with my friends, I don't consider myself better. What I really want to do is basically let them know that I'm still the same person, but I'm different, you know? Mm -hmm. So by everybody being they self, you know, it's not a problem as long as you're different. You know, everybody's different in their own certain way. Right. And basically as long as your own certain way stands out by, without you having to actually say it, then that means a lot. No question, no question. So now, do you have are any now? You know, a lot of times when you know you're doing something that people might not believe, like oh whatever, whatever, we'll see it, and then they start seeing it come to fruition. They start seeing it manifest, and then they're like, oh JD, I knew it's gonna happen. <laughs> you know, we got the bandwagoners. But are there any individuals who you know that's your age that you know they might not have have the same vision as you, but they have passion. They want to do something different. And they say, you know what, J.D., I want to be a part of your team. Do you have any of your, of your homies, your colleagues that are a part of your team? Like, definitely. Um, from the start, I still used to have people when I say, oh, I have my own company. People used to look at me like, Psh, like what you got? <laughs> like, I mean, like, okay, bomb. I showed them a business card. Look at my website. Look at this. Look at that. Look at my background. Look at my network. Look at my downline. Anything as that. And now as far as getting my homeboys, I mean, people that are naturally with me, basically, like, now with my clothing line, I have people that are doing... Some guy that I know is doing tattoos, I mean graffiti, I mean as far as in you instead of being out in the street, as far as that, because I used to have a passion for graffiti. Right. And <laughs> after that, um, <laughs> it, but it stopped, it actually, it actually was basically in paper. Mm -hmm. You know, I like to see things come true, like what, what, what's in my mind. So that's mm -hmm. what I'm seeing, to I want to see con come true, actually as I sit there in the meeting, I can say, okay, I want this on paper, bam, bam, bam. And I can get my friends, my homeboys, everybody to come along and come a part of, of something that is from us. You know, bringing mm. back something from the community. That's I mean, right. as far as in, in the future, when we grow up, when we see our next generation, I mean, as far as you can walk down Fifth Avenue, you can say, okay, that's an African-American store. That's a um, Spanish Latino store. You know, they came out from the bottom from not much, but look where they at now. You right. know, that's just hard work, you know, and just keeping your mind focused, set on something, you know. Right. Now, you know, you know, with success comes a lot of more people, you know. How, how, do, how do ladies like your success, brother? Punch your goofy. I mean, <laughs> 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 nah, you know, um, actually you met my lady. <laughs> oh, that was your lady today, yeah, right? Um, she was sitting real close. Yeah. Like, nah, I got this one. Y'all shut down. <laughs> you know, um, I keep it to a minimum, you know, I, I don't really let that get to me. I'm still the same person, the down-to-earth person. That's where everybody knows me at. Not a troublemaker, not no rumor spread or nothing like that. I'm just a cool down person. I mean, like, when I walk out down the hall, I'm telling you, the four minutes that I have to walk to class, that's without, without. Right. <laughs> and that kind of like... So, Miss Morgan, that's what I like about her, though, because she be in the hall and she be like, let's go, yes. let's go, let's go, you know, yeah. and... That pushed me to be like, okay, I have to get to class, you know, because if Ms. Morgan wasn't out there and other people that we have there that she specifically selected to get people that will get the job done, mm -hmm. then basically it'll be a regular high school. Somebody, people just hanging by their lockers, just doing nothing, just right. like, let's forget class, you so, know? So Ms. Morgan is a huge asset to our educational yes, system. Yes, indeed. Without question. Now, you know, we're going to be getting out of here soon, but I want you to, you know, tell me, you know, 30, 60 seconds. Your, your, your greatest moment. You know, you're going to have great moments. But up until now, what's one of your greatest moments? 30 seconds. Definitely, it was with Obama. I mean, with this guy, with basically 2,000 people around him, just trying to get to at least touch his shoulder. This guy really sat in front of me, gave me his hand, actually spoke to me, like, how you doing? My name is Rock Obama. Like, I didn't know. But <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> so I'm like, oh, my name is John Duran. Okay, nice to meet you. And he was like, okay, so I see you're very successful. I see a bright future for you. And as I actually explained it, he really sat there and listened to me. That made me like, like wow. Like, mm -hmm. And now that I see him as the future president, I'm like, okay, the president was talking to me like <laughs> one-on-one. I mean, like, he blocked everybody out. It was a one-on-one -on -one combo. Like, no doubt. That, that, that really stands out about my life in general. Oh, so right. that's something I could look back and be very proud of. Definitely. Miss Morgan, you know, 30 seconds before we get out of here, thoughts on this young man? I just want to remind you, J.D., that it's easy for people to see you and to believe in you because you have this light, this, this brightness about you, that passion, that passion that you have, people see it, and the confidence that you have, you have what people want. So people are going to gravitate to you because of that positive energy, and we're going to see your name in places, and um, we didn't talk about what college you're attending, but I know you're going to attend a college, and uh, yes, we, can, we can talk about that. So I wish you the best. I'm honored to know you, and I want to know you for the rest of my life, and best wishes, okay? Definitely, definitely. Um, 
my brothers and sisters out there, you heard from a dynamic young man, Mr. J.D. Duran. He's doing some amazing things, but he said it more than once at the top of the show. You can do it too. It's nothing, he's not doing anything, anything you can't. Well, you can't do it like he does it because it's only one J.D. In this particular story, it's only one J.D. Duran, you understand? But the, he said something very important. He doesn't let anybody deter him. He knows what he wants. If he's met with adversity, he finds a way to go around it. He has a strong support system. Yes, there are haters, but there are congratulators too. But the bottom line is he, he's realized quickly not to let anyone else's opinion of him become his opinion of himself unless it's something very positive. And you got to understand that. Your life is truly yours. It's never too soon to start. 15-year-old brother right here, but he's doing his thing. He's going to be showcased in Macy's. You will have one of those ties. I will wear one of those ties because don't think I'm always in urban. Yes, when the business meetings go down, I have to throw in a tie too. So I will be rocking one of my brother's ties. But you keep your eye out for this young brother because he's doing some amazing things. Understand the Young Producers Program. This is what we do. We showcase talent, the Urban Wall Street Pilot, showcase talent, recognize individuals in the community that's doing things who say they're coming from the bottom, rising to the top, creating opportunities for others, bringing others as they come. He's doing his thing for business. If you want to be like JD, don't know where to begin, you can join the Urban Wall Street Project Business Club at urbanwallstreet.biz. You know we will walk with you, take you to the promised land. Yes, we will get you there because we're there. We're going international in January 09, so for all my people in Europe, we see you. Mr. JD Duran, Mr. Denise Morgan, I'm happy to have you. Thank like you. I always say, keep your head up. Be mindful, be prosperous, stay focused and positive. Till next time, peace. Yes. Thanks.